Professor Graham Yorston, neuropsychiatrist, and in this episode of 5 Minute Mental Health Disorders, I'll be talking about Capgras Syndrome. Capgras Syndrome is a delusional disorder characterised by the unshakable belief that someone close to you has been replaced by an identical double. Why they have been replaced, and for what purpose, varies between cases. But as you can imagine, believing that someone in your own home, even your own bed, is not the person you thought they were, but an imposter, can be absolutely terrifying. But will you tell these fools I'm not crazy? Make them listen to me before it's too late! Listen to me. Please listen. Joseph Capgras, a French psychiatrist, first described the disorder in 1923 in a paper co-authored with Jean Grabul Lachaud. They called it l'illusion des sosies, or the illusion of doubles. The French word for double, sosie, comes from a character in a play by Plautus, in which the god Mercury disguises himself as the slave Sosia to allow his father Jupiter to enjoy the pleasures of King Amphitryon's wife disguised as the king. The story was well known in France, being the subject of one of Molière's plays. The syndrome was initially thought of as being primarily a symptom of schizophrenia, but psychoanalytic theorising soon began to dominate thinking about the disorder, and it came to be seen as a purely female condition in which patients developed ambivalent feelings towards certain individuals and tried to resolve their conflict by splitting them into separate positive and negative versions of the person. With the re-emergence of biological psychiatry in the 1980s, attention turned to try to understand the condition by taking account of the brain lesions suffered by many patients. The main symptom is a denial of the authenticity of someone well known to the patient, usually a family member, who they believe has been replaced by a double. The double is experienced as being very similar to the original in appearance and behaviour, but subtly different in minor details. Patients often experience other delusions of misidentification, such as the phenomenon of subjective doubles, the belief in the existence of doubles of oneself. In the original case description, Madame M believed her husband and children and many other people around her had been abducted and replaced. She believed her son was taken away when he was with his nurse and replaced by another baby who died. I was thus at the burial of a child who was not mine, she said only realising he had been switched by looking at his nails. She also believed her daughter had been abducted and replaced by other young girls who had little stitch marks on their faces, which she said were there to remove their thoughts. In many cases, the original is idealised and anger or physical aggression may be directed towards the double. Whilst extreme violence is rare, some people with Capgras syndrome have ended up killing the person they believe to be an imposter. This paper describes two cases of men in Italy who killed their mothers, one said of the day it happened, I didn't want to sleep that night. I wanted to stay awake because I was afraid. When I saw my mother open the fridge, I got scared and ran into the corner of the balcony shouting. She had eyes like an owl. I realised that my mother was Satan. He had taken possession of her. She was already dead and the devil had taken possession of her body. He was so convinced he threw her over the balcony to her death. Whilst most cases involve someone who looks different, it can also affect people who are blind. This paper reports the case of a woman who became convinced that her cat had been replaced. She said it was somehow different, making different sounds, and its fur was just not quite the same. There are other cases of people with no sight believing that someone's smell and taste were different. Inanimate objects can also be affected. I had a patient recently who was convinced that the house she had lived in for many years was not her own, and that someone was keeping her there against her will. The Capgras delusion is the most common of the misidentification syndromes, accounting for up to two-thirds of cases. It was previously thought to be quite rare, but in a prospective study of over 500 people who were hospitalised for a first episode of psychosis, 14% reported Capgras symptoms. As well as schizophrenia, it occurs in up to 10-20% to of people with Alzheimer's disease or Lewy body dementia, and has also been reported in a range of other neurological conditions including stroke, arteriovenous malformation, delirium, migraine, multiple sclerosis, brain injury, and tumours. Transient Capgras-like beliefs can also occur in cocaine and ketamine intoxication. Many theories have been proposed to explain the condition, from right hemisphere dysfunction, altered connectivity of cortical association areas, 
deficits in facial processing, dysfunction of working memory, and dopamine deficiency. One recent theory is that delusional misidentification syndromes occur when there is a lesion in the retrosplenial cortex, which normally activates when people are exposed to familiar stimuli, and the right ventral frontal cortex, which is involved with expectation violation processing. In other words, how the brain reacts when it encounters a stimulus that is not what it was expecting. The diagnosis is made by a detailed exploration of a patient's beliefs in a mental state examination. Because of the association with organic brain lesions, neuroimaging should be carried out to identify treatable causes. Treatment is usually directed towards the primary disorder. Antipsychotics have long been used successfully in this and other delusional disorders, but antidepressants and ECT can be of benefit if there is a depressive component. Low-dose antipsychotics and acetylcholinesterase inhibitors are used where it is secondary to dementia. In recent years, the value of psychological therapy has been increasingly recognised as beneficial in helping patients with psychosis understand and cope with their symptoms. In general terms, the prognosis is that of the underlying condition. Misidentification symptoms usually disappear as the patient goes into remission, but can reappear during relapses. In some cases, they persist despite an overall improvement in the primary disorder, and anecdotally, they're considered one of the more persistent psychotic symptoms. Capgrass symptoms secondary to organic brain syndromes generally have a better prognosis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to be kept up to date with the latest releases. See you next time.